Today we're going to take a look at what's called the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem takes a look at answering the question, when is the instantaneous rate of change or the rate of change at any specific moment equal to the average rate of change. So for example, if you go on an hour-long trip and you average 40 miles an hour on that trip, when were you actually driving 40 miles an hour? Sometimes you were driving faster, sometimes you were driving slower, but when were you actually equal to the 40 miles an hour, or your average for the entire trip? And this is what the mean value theorem finds for us. The mean value theorem, or sometimes called MVT, first, before we can use the mean value theorem, there are two requirements. that must be met. And if either of these are not true, the mean value theorem does not apply. First, the function must be continuous on the range we're talking about from A to B. And second, it must be differential on that same range from A to B. If the function is continuous between two numbers and dis differentiable on those two numbers or between those two numbers, then we can say that there exists at least one point C, that is, between A and B, such that the derivative at that point is equal to the rate of change, or the slope, the f of B minus f of A over B minus A. Maybe to help us see this, it might help to see it graphically, what we're talking about. Graphically, what we're saying is if I take a curve that goes from one point around up into another point from A to B, where we've got f of A and f of b on the y-axis. If I was to connect the point directly from a to b with a straight line, that slope is going to be my average rate of change between the two points. And what the mean value theorem states is that there is at least one point then in between them called c where the tangent line is parallel. In other words, the instantaneous rate of change at that point is the same as the average between A and B. In fact, you might notice that there's two points on this graph that give us a parallel slope. So maybe we could call them C1 and C2. This, this graph actually has two points where the slope is equal to the average slope between the two points. That's what the mean value theorem states, is that there's a point in the middle that has the same tangent slope as the secant from A to B. So um, first, I mentioned the requirements of the mean value theorem. It's always important to check the requirements. Is it differentiable? Is it continuous? So we could ask the question, does the mean value theorem 
apply. Or maybe it'd be better to say when does the mean value theorem apply. Let's change it to that. When does the mean value theorem apply to y equals the square root of x squared minus x minus 2? Well, we could take the derivative of just about any point, and it's continuous at just about every point, except for one important point or one important thing. What's under the square root must always be greater than or equal to 0. So what we're really saying is x squared minus x minus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0 for the mean value theorem to apply, because that's the only time it's actually continuous. Well, if we factor that, we get x minus 2 times x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And so we find out we've got these two potential solutions of 2 and negative 1. And we want to know when those solutions are positive specifically. So if I make a little graph here, you can see we've got a 0 at negative 1 and a 0 at 2. It's an x squared graph, so we should know it's a parabola. And specifically, we want the graph to be positive. We know it's positive on the left and the right, but negative in the center. When it's negative in the center, the graph's not continuous. So the range when the mean value theorem applies, when it's actually continuous, is from negative infinity to negative 1. And actually, we'll include the negative 1 because it's continuous at 0. Union from 2 to infinity. These are the points on which our graph is positive. The graph of what's under the square root is positive, meaning we can actually take the square root. It's actually continuous on those points. So those are the only ranges when the mean value theorem would apply. We could even ask more directly, does the mean value theorem apply to maybe y equals the natural log of 5x minus 1 over the interval from 0 to 3? Well, we know the domain of the natural log. What's inside the natural log must be greater than 0. It can't even be equal to 0. So what we need to check is 5x minus 1 greater than 0 going to put us outside of the range of 0 to 3 that this problem is interested in. Add 1, 5x is greater than 1. Divide by 5, x is, must be greater than 1 fifth. So we would say, no, the mean value theorem does not reply, apply because it is undefined from 0 to 1 fifth. If we are just going from 1 to 3, the mean value theorem would work because it's defined on all of those points. It's continuous on all of those points. But because it's discontinuous from 0 to 1 fifth, the mean value theorem will not apply over the range 0 to 3. Let's try another one. y equals e to the 3x squared minus 1. With e and with x squared and with multiplication, and with subtraction, we know the graph is continuous. There's no jumps, no breaks, no holes, no gaps. It's also differentiable on the entire graph. The derivative, we'd have to use a nice little chain rule. But if we took the derivative, it would be e to the 3x squared minus 1 times the derivative of the top stuff, which is 6x. And the minus 1 goes to 0. But uh, this is also uh, defined on all points. So there's nowhere this is not 
this is discontinuous. There's nowhere where this is not differentiable. I didn't even give the range, but let's just give it one because I should have. Let's say over negative 2 to 2. Definitely between negative 2 and 2, this is all defined. So we would say, yes, the mean value theorem is going to apply to this function on this range, which means between negative 2 and 2, the average rate of change can be found as an instantaneous rate of change. We don't know where, but we definitely know it exists. OK, then. Let's see, now that we've checked the requirements, let's see if we can use the mean value theorem. First, we're going to do it kind of visually. I want to graph this function and connect the a and b, and then show tangent lines. There's at least one. There might be more, so I'll put the s in parentheses with the same slope. So the graph we're working with is f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x. So let's take an x out to try and graph it. it gives us x squared minus 6x plus 8. Continuing to factor, that's x minus 2 times x minus 4. And so we have zeros at x equals 0, 2, and 4. And so we should be able to graph this. Before we graph this, let's go ahead and figure out what the um, slope is between the points, between the edges. It didn't even give a range. Let's do the range on negative 1 to 6. So let's find f of negative 1 and f of 6. And we'll have our calculator help with that, just to make it a little quicker. Um, we have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x. And I'll go to my table. Let's delete out the values we don't want. At negative 1, it's equal to negative 15. And at 6, it's equal to 48. So we had negative 15 and 48. So this graph's not going to be really to scale. But at negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up here is going to be 48 means we've got about negative 15 down here somewhere. We have a 0 at 0, 2, and 4. We know at 6 it's equal to 48. And at negative 1, it's negative 15. So this graph's going to come in, go up, go down, and up. But what this problem really wants us to do is connect the endpoints with this line, and then go ahead and just show graphically that we can draw a parallel line that's tangent to the graph, at least at one point. And you notice there's two points where those lines are parallel. Probably a little too steep there. Whoop, too far the other direction. Ah, tricky. There we go. Parallel lines, same slope, tangent to uh, the points on the graph between our a and our b, between negative 1 and negative 6. But just doing it graphically is a little boring. Let's actually find the points. Let's find the points c where we get that average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change, or f prime of c. The derivative at c is f of b minus f of a 
over b minus a. And let's go ahead and do the same function that we did up above. We're going to do f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x on the same range of negative 1 comma 6. And we're trying to find these black dots that we just found. Where are those points that we're going to get the same slope as the average slope? Well, first, let's find the average slope. That's f of b minus f of a over b minus a, or f of 6, using the endpoints, minus f of negative 1 over 6 minus negative 1. And we just saw that f of 6 is equal to 48. Minus f of negative 1 is negative 15 over 6 minus negative 1. So we have 63 over 7, which is equal to a nice, pretty 9. So we want to know when the derivative is going to be equal to 9. So we're going to find the derivative f of f prime of x, which is 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. We want to know when that's equal to the average slope or equal to 9. Well, we need to subtract 9 from both sides to make it equal to 0. 3x squared minus 12x minus 1 equals 0. And you might see that that's not going to factor very nicely. So let's see. Our x then, using the quadratic formula, is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 1 all over 2 times 3. And when I do that on my calculator, I'll end up with two values. First, if we subtract, you get negative 0 0.08 and 4.08. So my graph's not really to scale, but we would have hit those slopes at negative 0 0.08 and 4.08. So I went through and made a graph that was more to scale than the one that we had before. The red curve that you see here is our function that we've been working with. And then what I did is I put a dot at negative 1, comma, negative 15, and 6, comma, 48. And you can see I've connected them with this orange line. Then what I did is I put a purple dot here at the first point that we had, the negative 0 0.08, and drew a tangent line. I also put a dot at the second point that we found at 4.08 and drew a tangent line. And you see that those blue tangent lines are perfectly parallel to the orange tangent line. And what that means is that the instantaneous rate of change at those two points on those blue lines is equal to the average rate of change of the orange line that connects the two endpoints. And that's visually how the mean value theorem works. So our two answers do work. The mean value theorem is right there on your screen. The big thing we're talking about today is that if the function is continuous and differentiable between the two endpoints, there exists at least one point c such that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change, or the slope, between the two points. Take a look at the assignment and try a few of these, and we'll take a closer look at them in class.